Hey everybody. So in this video, we're talking about building linear, quadratic, and exponential models. So that encompasses a whole lot. Specifically for this video, we're only going to be talking about linear and quadratic models. We'll talk about exponential ones in a separate video. Here they say the function f of x shown in the table below is a linear function. Identify its slope and y-intercept and write its formula in slope-intercept form. Well, the first thing we have to know about slope intercept form is that that is y equals mx plus b. So the reason this is called the slope intercept form is because you have your slope and your y intercept. So it's called the slope intercept form. Mathematicians, we're not very creative with names. So here, the easiest one of these to find is probably going to be the y intercept. Okay. B, you can always find when x is equal to zero. So in my table, I'm going to go where x is equal to zero, and then that y value here is going to be the value of b. All right, now we have to find the slope. Okay, the slope, m, is your rate of change. Now, you can find this various ways. With a linear function, the rate of change is how the y values are changing from one x value to the next consecutive x value. So if there were a jump here like negative one to one and then one to three, you would have to know that you're jumping two values on the x coordinate. Okay, so here I'm looking at since my x's are moving consecutively, I'm looking at how the y values are changing. So what happened to go from negative 2 to 2? Well, it looks like I added 4. Well, this should be the same throughout the function. So let's check. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. Okay, so we know that our rate of change is 4. Okay, we're adding 4 every single time. So now we're going to put 4 in for m the slope. We're going to put 2 in for b, the y-intercept. So my function here is going to be f of x, which is the same thing as y, and that is going to be 4x plus 2. And this is going to be my linear function that produces this table. Okay, let's look at some other ways to build a linear function. So in this example, they tell us the linear function a of x passes through the point 5, negative 2, and it has a slope. Okay, let's remember our slope-intercept form. Here's what we have. We have y equals mx plus b. So here's our slope. Here's our y-intercept. Okay, so we have a slope of 4 fifths, but we don't know the y intercept because we don't have an x value of zero. Okay, so while this is one way to write a linear function, it doesn't really help us when we're given a point and a slope. Okay, because we only have half the information. We only have the slope. Well, there is another way to write a linear function, and this is called point slope. So if you have not seen this before, write this down. This is called the point-slope form of a line. This is probably one of your more famous ways to write a linear function. And if you pursue higher level math, when you're talking about tangents and derivatives, this is all you will see. You won't really see y equals mx plus b. They'll always have this form, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So m is the same. You're going to have your slope. And what's convenient about this form here is you have a place to plug in your y1 value and your x value. Okay, so this is the form that we're going to use, and we're going to plug in our x and our y. So we have y minus the value of y1, so that's negative 2. So here we're going to minus negative 2. This is equal to the slope of 4 fifths times x minus x1, so x, and then our x1 value is going to be 5. Now I can simplify this to have my equation. So this is going to be y plus 2 equals 4 fifths x minus 4. And now I want y by itself so that it can be written in y equals mx plus b. So what I would do is subtract 2 from both sides. And my equation is going to be 4 fifths x minus 6. 
And here I have my slope and my y-intercept now. And I was able to get that from having just a slope and a coordinate point. All right, let's look at another one. The linear function h of x passes through two points. Okay, so let's think about this. I want this, y equals mx plus b. But I don't have the slope and I don't have the y-intercept. Okay, well, my next step is to use this, point-slope formula. So here we have y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Okay, this, given a point and a slope, will help us write the equation in standard form. But here's an issue here. I have two coordinates to pick, so it doesn't matter which one I use for x1 and y1, but I don't have a slope. Okay, so now I'm missing something from this. So given two coordinate points, how can I find the slope? Well, I can use that by saying the change in y over the change in x. Now, if you haven't seen this notation, that delta right there, that triangle, that just means the change in. So here, you've probably seen it this way. You have probably seen y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So that's the change in the y over the change in the x. Okay, so let's think about how these values are changing. So I have seven minus one, so here seven minus one, and then I have the change in x, negative six minus three. So what does this give us? Seven minus one is six, negative six minus three is negative nine. This is negative two thirds, okay? This is my slope, negative two thirds. That's my value of m, and I have coordinate points. So now I can go back to this to write it in standard form. All right, so here I'm gonna choose the three one. The, it really doesn't matter which one you pick. The only reason I'm picking this is because uh, is because I don't wanna work with negatives. So I have y minus y1 equals m, the slope that we just found, negative two thirds, x minus x1. And then here we will simplify. So I have y minus one equals negative two thirds x minus or excuse me, plus, because that negative times that negative is gonna be a positive. And this is going to be, what do we have? Two. And lastly, I can add the one. So my equation here is going to be negative two thirds x plus three. And that will be my equation that passes through each of these points. All right, so that's gonna be it for writing linear equations. Now, you probably have had a lot of practice doing this. Now, and adding to this, because we've already talked about quadratics, could you now write a quadratic equation? So in prior examples, I know that we've worked a lot with straight lines, okay? It's very easy when you're given the graph of a line to write that equation, y equals mx plus b. Now, here we have parabolas. So this is a quadratic. Can you write the equation of this parabola? And if you haven't worked with this, here's the easiest way to do it. You can write this in vertex form. That's going to be the easiest way to write the equation of a quadratic. So here, h and k, if you don't remember, h and k, this is your vertex. So here, here is my vertex, and it looks like this is, what do we have? What do we have? We have negative four and negative five. Okay, so that's the value of my vertex. This would be h and k. So let's write that out here. We have x, minus negative four squared minus five. So here I have y equals a x plus four squared minus five. Now, I need to know the value of a. Okay, remember a, this is your stretch or compress factor. So this is very, very important because this is gonna tell you your leading coefficient when you write this in standard form, if you wanted to write it in standard form. So there is a specific way to find the value of a. Let's look at that. So if I wanted to find the value of a here, it looks as though I would need to isolate a. So here I have a four and the five, but I have this x and this y. Well, luckily for us, they gave us a coordinate point. So here, this coordinate point is negative five, negative two. 
I could use this x and y value in my equation and isolate the a. So I'm going to do that right down here. So this is now negative 2 equals the a value. My x value is now negative 5 plus 4 quantity squared minus 5. Now look what I'm doing. The only variable here is a, and now I can solve for a. So I have negative 2 equals negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So this is positive 1a, or just a, minus 5. So now I can add 5 to both sides, and it looks like I have 3 is the value of a. So this is going to go right here. So now I have y is equal to 3 times x plus 4 quantity squared minus 5. And this would be my equation that would yield this parabola. And that's how you find the equation of all parabolas. Now, if you got this and your teacher said, I want you to write it in standard form, so you wanted this, you wanted y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, all you would have to do was multiply this out. So you could say 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 4 minus 5, you would FOIL, and then just combine your like terms. All right? It would just be a, a few more steps, but I like this best. We really like vertex form because this is really easy. Using this, is it's very easy to generate the graph. Let's try another example with this. Okay, so here we have another quadratic. So I would recommend that you pause the video and you try this one and see if you can generate the same equation that I do. So remember that when we are working with quadratics, the easiest form to work with is vertex form. So here is my vertex form of my parabola. And I will start by plugging in my vertex. So here it looks as though my vertex is 3, 6. So that's my x and that's my y. Or excuse me, since this is the vertex, better to say h and k. So I have y equals a x minus 3 squared plus 6. And now I need the value of a. Well, that's really easy to do when you're given a coordinate point. So here, this coordinate point of 5, 5, this is what I will plug in for the values of x and y to isolate the variable a. So here we have 5 equals a times 5 minus 3 quantity squared plus 6. So now we have 5 equals 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so this is now 4a plus 6. Now I have my two-step equation, so I can subtract 6 from both sides, and I get negative 1 equals 4a. When I divide, I get negative 1 fourth is the value of a. Now I can just take this and substitute it in, and I have my equation in vertex form. Negative 1 fourth x minus 3 quantity squared plus 6. And here, this is the equation of this quadratic right here. And that is how you write the equation of lines and parabolas. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. In a following video, we'll talk about how you write the equations of exponents. I just didn't want to put too much in one video. All right. I hope that this helped. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and we'll see you all in the next video.